how did Czechoslovakia become independent in 1918? Well, that happened towards the end of October, when the Austro-Hungarian Empire, where Czechoslovakia was part of before, was crumbling. And a key figure in this was Tomáš Masaryk. Now, how did this all happen is what you will learn today. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher. I like to cover history on location as I'm now in Prague, Czech Republic. If you find this on location content interesting, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. What is now the Czech Republic or Czechia and Slovakia was for centuries under Habsburg rule. When World War I broke out, the Habsburg monarchy, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was together with Germany fighting against the Entente, Russia, France and Britain. Now initially, the war started as a local conflict on the Balkan, although so it seemed. However, due to the alliances, the conflict widened and global powers were pitted against each other. An expected quick victory was not achieved and a drawn out trench war it became. Germans that were living in the Czech lands supported the war, but Czechs and Slovaks opposed it since they did not want to fight against fellow Slavs, Serbians and later Russians. Starting with the provocation of signing Czech patriotic songs, efforts to avoid mobilization, these expressions went as far as desertion from the front line and the formation of military units fighting on the side of the Entente against the Central Powers. At first it was only a few individuals, but from April 1915 larger units comprised largely of Czech soldiers began to surrender, especially to the Russian forces. As the war progressed, essential goods became scarce for the population. Due to the war blockade, the dual monarchy had to rely on its own agricultural production. And this production was declining as many men were sent to the front line. In the spring of 1915, a rationing system of food, coal and textile was put in place. On a political level, political rights and freedom of citizens were limited. Many Czech politicians were subject to persecution. A military bureaucratic dictatorship was in the making. Voices in Vienna were raised to incorporate the Czech lands into a unified German Central Europe. This was published in the 1915 Eastern Program. This caused much resentment among the Czech population. And as for the Slovaks, there was not much enthusiasm either. They too faced censorship, arrest and physical violence on occasion. Members of the Slovak League already decided in 1914 that a union with the Czechs was the best option for them. As the Austro-Hungarian Empire was crumbling, the establishment of an independent Czechoslovakia seemed to be a viable option. A key person in this was Tomáš Masaryk. In the decades before the war, he wrote about Czech autonomy and the future of the Czechs in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In the mid-1890s, he had addressed the political and historical status of the Czech lands in his work named The Czech Question. A defining element was the cultural struggle against German influences. Masaryk also questioned the pan-Slavic and Slavophile traditions that led many of his predecessors and colleagues to view Tsarist Russia as a desirable alternative to the Germans and Austrians. It was Masaryk's belief that in a very realistic sense, Czech links to the Russians and other Slavonic peoples were far less substantial than those to the peoples of the West, especially the French and the Germans, from whom the Czechs had learned so much over the centuries. In the years leading up to the First World War, Masaryk believed that there was no future for the Czechs within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. But for many Czechs, this was an impossible dream. Even if the Austro-Hungarian Empire would somehow collapse, they expected that their lands would be part of the German Empire. Now, eventually, Masaryk, in 1915, he left for Britain. And from there, he strived for an independent Czechoslovakia. Early 1915, he and his colleagues shifted their focus on a future independent state of Czechs and Slovaks. By the time he went to Geneva and met his colleague Edvard Benesch. Benesch returned to Prague to establish a secret resistance committee. In the summer of 1915, Masaryk held a speech in Geneva denouncing Austro-Hungary and advocating an independent Czech state. A few months later, Benesch managed to leave Prague for Paris, passing information and documents to the French Ministry of War. There he worked together with Slovak Milan Ratislav Stefanik, who had left his homeland back in 1904 and later volunteered for the French Air Force. The trio, Masaryk, Benesch, 
and Stefanik. They set out their activities and they set up committees that were active in North America, in France, Britain, and Russia. Late 1915, the members of such organizations in the US signed the Cleveland Agreement in support of the establishment of a federal state comprising Bohemia, Moravia, Czech Silesia, and Slovakia. They found common cause with American President Woodrow Wilson. Wilson would later present his 14-point plan in which the people of Austria-Hungary should get autonomous development. In May 1917, Masryk and Stefanik arrived in Petrograd. By this time, the Russian Tsardom was no more. After the February Revolution, the provisional government had taken office. Now, this government was led by Alexander Kerensky. Czechoslovak delegates, they convinced them to set up a Czechoslovak legion because the Russians held many Czechs and Slovaks as POWs who had previously fought in the Austro-Hungarian army and were taken prisoner by the Russians. And they convinced him to set up a Czechoslovak legion. Soldiers of this legion would see action during the Kerensky offensive against Austro-Hungarian and German troops. Then the October Revolution occurred when the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, seized power in Petrograd. Lenin sought a way out of the war and eventually he signed a peace treaty with the Central Powers in March 1918 known as the Peace Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. Now the Czechoslovak legionnaires, they rebelled against the Bolsheviks and they wanted to get out of Russia, but they couldn't travel to the west because there were enemies there, so they traveled all the way to the east and they fought their way to Vladivostok. The evacuation of the legion stretched from January 1919 to November 30th, 1920. It's a story of its own. Also, there were American Czechs and Slovaks that had volunteered to serve in Czechoslovak units in France, Russia and Italy prior to the US entry to the war. Early 1918, Czech and Slovak representatives came together in Prague and signed the Epiphany Declaration, which called for a Czechoslovak state. Austro-Hungary did not fare well by this point. There were strikes, there was even a mutiny in the Bay of Kotor. In May, members of the Czech and Slovak organizations in the United States joined Masaryk in signing the Pittsburgh Agreement, endorsing a common and independent state comprising the lands of Czechs and Slovaks. Masaryk got support from the US, France and Britain. Mid-October, Benesch announced that the Czechoslovak National Council in Paris had become the provisional government of a future Czechoslovakia. While Austro-Hungarian Empire Karl I did an attempt to federalize the Austrian part, the Washington Declaration, a declaration of independence for the Czechoslovak nation in Washington DC on the October 18th was a de facto independence declaration of Czechoslovakia. Early November 1918, Austro-Hungary sued for peace and eventually signed an armistice with the Allies. If you want to learn the details of this process, of how Austro-Hungary lost the First World War, click right here. Thank you for watching. See you later.